Level zero. You walk across a sidewalk. It feels firm, unshakable. Trees stand upright. Roads stretch straight into the horizon. The world gives you no reason to doubt it. But beneath your feet, Earth is slowly changing its mind. Water moves underground. Air pockets form in ancient rock. Minerals dissolve over centuries. You can't see it. You won't hear it. But this is the beginning of a collapse you didn't know was waiting. This is non-collapse ground, terrain that hasn't failed, yet. And the longer it stays quiet, the more deceptive it becomes. Because sinkholes don't start with a roar, they start with a whisper. And when they speak loud enough for us to notice, it's already too late. One-fourth of Earth's land surface is prone to sinkholes due to karst terrain. Regions made of soft, dissolvable rock like limestone, gypsum, and salt beds. Countries like the US, China, Mexico, and parts of the Middle East sit on these fragile foundations. Level 1. It begins as something innocent. Rain falls, the earth drinks it. But that water picks up carbon dioxide from the air and soil, forming carbonic acid. Harmless to us, but devastating to limestone. Over decades, sometimes centuries, that acidic water trickles downward, dissolving the limestone grain by grain. Hollow spaces form deep underground. The roof stays intact, for now. This is a solution sinkhole, invisible, slow, and quiet. You can walk right over it and never know what's below. Florida is the sinkhole capital of the United States, and it's filled with solution sinkholes silently widening beneath homes, roads, and forests. Nothing on the surface warns you, no cracks, no slumping, just a lawn, a driveway, a tree perched on a cavity big enough to swallow a car. If your region sits on carbonate rock, you're more at risk, especially if the water table fluctuates. Drilling records and geologic surveys can help homeowners check if they're in solution-prone zones. Level 2. Now the soil joins the conspiracy. You've got a thin layer of sandy or silty soil covering a dissolving rock base. As cavities form, the loose soil above starts filtering into the empty space. Not in chunks, but grain by grain, like sand slipping through an hourglass. The surface begins to sink, just a little, then a little more. A fence post tilts. Your driveway sinks slightly on one side. The land breathes out, but in slow motion. This is a cover subsidence sinkhole, a quiet, unhurried surrender. There's no dramatic collapse, just a gentle bowing of the earth. The Apalachicola lowlands in Florida show these all over the map. Low, round depressions that most people mistake for natural ponds or landscape quirks. These are especially common in sandy soil with little clay to bind it. You might notice sudden changes in drainage or that plants start dying in oddly sunken patches. That's your red flag. Level 3. This is where Earth loses its patience. You've still got soluble rock below, still dissolving, but now the soil above is different, thick, heavy clay. Unlike sand, clay doesn't settle gracefully. It holds its shape until it doesn't. A cavity grows beneath the clay like a balloon, bigger, wider. Then one day, without warning, snap, the lid gives out and the ground drops like a trap door. In seconds, what was once a bedroom or a garage or an intersection becomes a gaping pit. This is a cover collapse sinkhole, sudden, violent, and merciless. The kind that makes headlines. The kind that doesn't wait. In 2013, Sefna, Florida, a man named Jeff Bush was sleeping in his bed when the ground opened beneath him. The sinkhole swallowed his entire room. He was never found. These holes don't just destroy property, they rewrite maps. Clay-based soils are deceptive. They mask instability until the very end. If you hear popping or cracking sounds indoors or notice doors that stop closing properly, you might be living above a clay lid near its breaking point. Level 4. No cracking, no sagging, just gone. These are the stealth assassins of the sinkhole world. You're looking at very thin soil layers on top of already cavernous underground voids. There's no time for warning signs. No time for the land to settle or dip. It just drops. These are dropout sinkholes, sometimes referred to as chimney sinkholes. Their sides are often vertical, their depths terrifying. Imagine walking across a grassy field and then the earth vanishes beneath your feet. Not over hours, not even minutes, in under five seconds. Guatemala City, 2010. 
a 100-foot deep, perfectly cylindrical sinkhole opened up and swallowed an entire three-story building. It looked less like erosion and more like someone had punched a hole straight through the city with a cosmic drill. Dropout sinkholes often form in areas with very thin soil, especially when water drainage is poor. If you live near former landfills, abandoned quarries, or old septic fields, you may be over dangerously hollow terrain. Avoid heavy structures in such zones. Level 5. These aren't born from nature. They're made by us. Leaky underground pipes, improper backfilling after construction, forgotten mine shafts, buried trash, all of it weakens the soil from below. Then rain hits, water rushes in, and suddenly the ground gives up, not because of nature, but because we weren't paying attention. This is the man-made sinkhole, caused by infrastructure failure, human error, or neglect. Sometimes they open in the middle of urban streets, sometimes beneath luxury condos, sometimes inside your living room. Ottawa, Canada, 2016. A massive sinkhole swallowed three lanes of downtown road near Parliament Hill. The cause? A tunneling project below weakened the support structure. Gas lines broke. Buildings were evacuated. A city block disappeared. Most man-made sinkholes are preventable. Regular inspection of aging infrastructure, especially sewer and stormwater lines, can detect early signs. Cracks, leakage, or recurring puddles in odd places may be early warning signs. Level 6. One sinkhole opens, then another, then another. It's not just one cavity, it's a network. An urban web of pipes, cables, tunnels, and buried infrastructure slowly unraveling. When one section collapses, it weakens the adjacent areas. Underground water mains burst, storm drains fail, and suddenly, a street becomes a chain reaction of collapse. This is an urban sinkhole chain, a cascade of engineered instability, not caused by natural rock, but by human systems that fail in sequence. Mexico City, 2021. Heavy rains and an aging water system caused multiple sinkholes to open across entire neighborhoods damaging homes and swallowing parked cars. The city sits atop an old lake bed, making it even more vulnerable. In cities, you're not just standing on soil, you're standing on a maze of aging pipes, many of which date back a century and weren't designed for today's demands. In urban areas, look for sinkhole patterns near intersections, construction zones, or recent utility work. Local governments often publish maps of high-risk utility zones, these can help homeowners and businesses prepare, relocate, or reinforce. Level 7. Now picture this. You're in the Arctic. Everything is frozen. A solid sheet of white stretches in every direction, but then collapse. Beneath the surface of a glacier, meltwater rivers carve deep tunnels into the ice. And over time, the ceiling of that tunnel gives in. Suddenly, a hole opens in the glacier. Sharp-edged, icy, and sometimes hundreds of feet deep. These are glacier sinkholes, also called moulins. They're not in soil, but in ancient ice. They can swallow snowmobiles, research equipment, or even people, and their depth makes rescue nearly impossible. In Greenland, satellite images reveal dozens of moulins forming each year as climate change accelerates melt rates. Some sinkholes channel entire rivers beneath the ice sheet, speeding up glacial movement and raising sea levels. Moulins play a major role in global climate dynamics. As they form, they allow surface meltwater to lubricate the base of glaciers, causing them to slide faster into the ocean. The more we understand ice sinkholes, the better we can model future sea level rise. Level 8. Now dive, literally. Sinkholes don't just happen on land. Underwater, they're even more dramatic. These are called blue holes, deep, circular voids in the seafloor often formed when ancient land-based sinkholes flooded during rising sea levels. Some are thousands of years old, others are still active. They appear as perfect, dark circles in otherwise turquoise water, mysterious, ominous, hypnotic. The Great Blue Hole in Belize, 300 meters wide, 125 meters deep, a former limestone cavern, it collapsed and flooded at the end of the last ice age. Today, it's a diver's dream and a scientific enigma. In 2018, sonar scans revealed strange stalactites and even possible microbial life at the bottom. 
Submarine sinkholes can also form due to methane hydrate dissociation, when frozen gas beneath the seafloor suddenly melts, causing collapse and triggering underwater landslides or tsunamis. Blue holes may hold clues to ancient climate cycles, sea level changes, and deep microbial ecosystems. Some researchers believe they may even help simulate conditions found on icy moons like Europa. Level 9. Now shift to volcanic landscapes. Lava once flowed here, a glowing river beneath the surface. Then it cooled, the outer crust hardened, and the molten center drained away, leaving behind a lava tube, a hollow tunnel beneath solid rock. For years, even centuries, it holds. But eventually, the roof weakens. One footstep, one tremor, one rainfall, and the ceiling drops into the tunnel below. This is a lava tube sinkhole, a uniquely volcanic phenomenon. They look like cave-ins but go far deeper than they seem. In Hawaii, Volcanoes National Park, hikers have stumbled upon lava tube collapses big enough to hide a bus. In Iceland, parts of entire lava fields have slumped inward, creating eerie craters lined with obsidian. And because they're not made of soil but solidified basalt, these collapses can appear sudden and shockingly deep. Lava tubes aren't just geological relics. They're targets for space colonization. NASA studies them as potential habitats on the Moon and Mars, since they could shield astronauts from radiation. But here on Earth, they're hiding in plain sight under lava fields and volcanic zones. Level 10. No rain, no plants, no water, and yet, sinkholes still exist. On the Moon, they're not caused by acid or erosion. They're the remnants of ancient lava tubes, just like on Earth. But here, they've stood untouched for billions of years until part of the ceiling gives in, leaving a clean-edged hole that drops into pitch-black void. These are lunar sinkholes, and they might just be the key to future moon bases. Japan's Kaguya spacecraft and NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter have both identified potential sinkholes near the Marius Hills region. These openings lead into underground tunnels that could be 100 meters wide and kilometers long. Imagine a network of natural moon caves, untouched by micrometeorites, extreme temperatures, or solar radiation. That's more than a hole. That's real estate for the next generation of space explorers. Understanding extraterrestrial sinkholes gives scientists clues about planetary formation, past volcanic activity, and how to build safe habitats in alien worlds. Moon sinkholes are now front runners for landing site selection in upcoming Artemis missions. Level 11. Now leave geology and enter physics. Imagine this. You're walking. The sky is blue. The air is still. Then it's not. The ground doesn't just fall. It ceases to exist. No rubble. No debris. Just absence. No matter. No light. No reflection. This is a dimensional sinkhole, purely theoretical, but grounded in quantum physics. A place where space-time itself folds, collapses, or glitches. One theory calls it vacuum decay, a shift in the fundamental laws of the universe. If a tiny, high-energy bubble of true vacuum formed, it could spread at light speed, annihilating everything in its path, including the rules of physics. The concept of quantum tunneling and Higgs field instability, which suggests that the current stable state of our universe could eventually fall into a lower energy state, destroying everything. Terrifying? Yes. Likely in our lifetime, probably not. But the idea is simple. Some sinkholes wouldn't just take the land, they'd take reality with them. While entirely speculative, dimensional sinkholes push the limits of astrophysics, quantum theory, and multiverse hypotheses. They also remind us the universe isn't as stable as it looks. Studying how space can fail helps us better understand its structure, and perhaps one day manipulate it. Level 12. The final level, you're in sunlight, warmth, gravity, everything feels right. Then, gone. No warning, no tremor, just the deletion of everything around you. This is not erosion, not water, not pressure. This is something else, a planetary scale event that removes land from existence. Think, a rogue black hole passing nearby, bending gravity, causing land to stretch and vanish. A cloaked alien probe, harvesting mass silently and undetectably. 
a rendering glitch in a simulation, if we're in one, where terrain loads incorrectly or fails altogether. Some researchers jokingly call this a null zone, a total absence of spatial coordinates, a cosmic redaction, not a sinkhole, but a gap in the script of existence. Sudden terrain disappearance glitches in advanced simulations, the concept of phantom matter, and unexplainable astronomical voids, like the Bhutas Void, a 330 million light-year-wide area of space with nearly nothing in it. These ideas aren't practical, yet. But they're not fantasy either. They live at the fringe of theoretical physics and cosmology, driving research into how matter behaves at the edge of understanding. They also inspire technologies for detecting gravitational anomalies, cloaked structures, and quantum instability. So next time you're walking and feel the solid Earth below you, ask yourself, how deep does that certainty go? And more importantly, what's been happening underneath you this whole time?